Hi, welcome to the Sifu Mimi Chan Show. Thanks for joining the conversation. It's another episode of the Mimi and Greg show. We go typical Mimi and Greg style with tangents, current events, and a good old fashioned rucka rant. In this episode, we discuss the importance of language and communication. Greg also shares his take on the ongoing investigation into Trump's Mar-a-Lago docs. This is technically episode 50 with my dear friend, Greg Brucka. I feel like we certainly should have been sharing a glass of champagne or something, so that's really bad planning on my part. We will have to table it until next time. The past 50 episodes with Greg has been a gift. I am so grateful for my friendship with Greg and how much he helps me grow and learn. Thank you to all of Greg's fans who have tuned in and cheered us on. A special shout out to the Patreon supporters who help keep this podcast going. For those that don't already know, Greg Rucka is a New York Times bestselling author of hundreds of comics and nearly two dozen novels. He is also the writer for his critically acclaimed and award-winning film, The Old Guard, starring Charlize Theron. I'm loving these conversations and hope you are too. If you are, please rate my podcast on your platform of choice and share it with others. If you would like to support with a donation to help keep this podcast going and support the work I do, you can become a patron of the show by visiting my website or patreon.com slash Sifu Mimi Chan. For comments or suggestions, reach out on social media at Sifu Mimi Chan. Now on with the show. Hello. Hello, Greg. Hello, Mimi. How are you? I am good. It is a Sunday, so is. this is different. <laughs> yeah, we're we're getting this uh, in under the wire before I depart for parts unknown. So yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know Great. leading up to travel is always very hectic, at least for me, because it's like a week long packing process, and I've got to like check my list twice, kind of thing. So is 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 it worse for you? Because it seems like you're going to be gone a while. Um, it's. It is going to be a while. Um, it's it, 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 it's turned into a process now, you know. Um, th- the interesting thing this time is I'm actually trying to bring less for a longer trip. Oh, okay. Um, so I will I will be doing laundry. Let's let's, uh, let, let's say I it, it, it's um, I will be doing a lot of laundry. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I mean, it's just it's just getting everything in order. And there's a lot of stuff that um, task wise has to be done that isn't related to the trip directly. It's trying to get things done before the trip. Yes. Um, yes. And yeah. So and then there are all the things that you can't control. Right. It's all the stuff that. It's like, well, these people need you to do this and you have to do this. And there's a phone call here and a meeting there. And it's like, guys, I'm really trying to get my shit sorted. So, (laughs) you know, Uh, I know. I know it's it. I think it's also this like it depends how long you're going to be gone for kind of thing. But then, you know, when you're coming back, what you're going to have on your plate then. And do you prep for that now? Or do you like what do you tackle? Right. It's prioritizing. How long is uh, this stretch going to be? It's going to be about seven weeks total. Yeah, that is. It's it's quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. So this one's brutal. Well, I mean, there are two shows. Yes, I wanted um, to ask right. you about that. There's there's the festival in Lodz um, that I'm going to attend. That'll be the 23rd, 24th, and 25th of September. There is the Lakes Festival in England, which is going to be the 14th, 15th, and 16th of October. Mm. Um, and so part of the duration here is that it didn't make a whole lot of sense um price wise or or time wise to go back forth back forth back forth mm-hmm. right i mean it's just like that's just silly yeah. so yeah especially if it's just to take pictures of your shoes on the carpet at pdx exactly i mean really <laughs> i mean all that is is going to be another three sets of you know <laughs> PDX carpet shots. So, um, 
Yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, it, it's going to be an interesting trip. It's going to be an interesting trip. Uh, yeah, I was actually surprised you were doing festivals and. Um, well, it's funny because both year. of these were off of invitations that have been extended at the start of the pandemic. Right. And the Lakes Festival, um, Michael Lark had done with his bride a couple of years ago and loved it and was raving about how wonderful everybody was and said, is it okay if I give them your number and so on? And I was like, sure. And they were like, can you come? And I was like, (laughs) all right, Michael was really clear. This is a lovely show. Yeah. Um, And then the Lotus one I had done, uh, I think a a podcast um, interview with, um, a gentleman, I think in Warsaw, but he had talked about the festival and the people who had coordinated that interview been like, we would love it if you'd want to come. And I was like, you know, yeah, I would. And there is, there's a twofold factor there. The first is I am, um, I'm not great about getting us out of my comfort zone. <laughs> um, I have no idea what you mean. <laughs> oh, listen, Miss Galapagos. Um, and, and, and part of it is that I only have so much, so much time left on this planet. It, it would be, it would be foolish not to experience more of the planet mm-hmm. and travel is important and as a writer travel is very important yeah and so that was part of it and um and 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 i have family from from poland and from Lodz specifically my mom's oh. mom um was born in Lodz. Oh. so there is a piece of me that's like i'm not going to have time to see anything and I know that, but, but it mattered to me. I was like, you know what? I should, I should, I should put my feet on the ground. Yeah. Being um, there, being around the culture, getting a bit of the food. I mean, yeah. and, you have and, to eat, right? Right. And, and con- confronting my own, you know, um, apprehensions about travel. Like my brother, my younger brother is much better, um, has always been, um, a great traveler. And I had a very bad experience when I was young traveling alone and, uh, and in a country where I barely spoke a word of the language and it was really traumatizing for me. Mm. It was a miserable experience. Uh. And, um, and here I am 40 odd years later going, maybe you ought to try to get over that. So, <laughs> You know, um, well, better and, now than never. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. you know, and, and then there's the movie stuff and all the other stuff that's going on. And, and so there's a lot. There's a lot to it. And and also there's uh, in, in there, hopefully, you know, I'll have the opportunity to meet up with Jen and we'll have a little vacation time together, which yes. would be really special because I think the last vacation she and I were on was in 2000 and seven oh. just the two of us oh no oh yes this i is do the not approve of, being, of this <laughs> yeah well but this is this is part of the problem with being a freelancer mm. um and part of the problem also that arises from our lifestyle when the kids were young because right. we right. didn't we didn't actually have like ready relative right Take the kids for the to, weekend exactly it was not something that you could do mm. um so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see if we can't swing a little something there as well. So. Yes, you must. You must, you must, you must. I'm I gonna will like tell text Jen you both that you daily. said must. I'm gonna text her must. Please <laughs> don't. I'm gonna be, you know, <laughs> okay, I, I get okay, charged okay. for those. So okay, the right. email is better. Email you know? is better. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um so yeah. Oh gosh, no, I think that'll be really great though. I yeah. I as I as you know, I am very big on travel and yes. an advocate for travel, really, because for me, I was fortunate that my parents in enabled us, like just gave me the privilege of being able to travel since I was very mm-hmm. young and just seeing so many third world countries at a young age 
definitely changed my worldview on mm-hmm. things and made me appreciate things like plumbing <laughs> at a very <laughs> early age. <laughs> and and even now I need those reminders, right? Even yeah. though I had exposure, it's like, you just need those reminders. And then the fun stuff too, right? Just being in different cultures and yes. hearing different languages and experiencing yeah. different customs. I just, oh, I love it. But I also yeah. have a lot of anxiety with flying and traveling for someone See, it, that does it, it so much. <laughs> it isn't It isn't the actual traveling that right, does it right. for me i don't i don't have a problem with planes Flying, anymore yeah. um there were there was a period where i did mm-hmm. um but in the main uh, that's not it. it it's entirely and it comes you know and my parents were big on travel too this is the mm-hmm. thing this is the, it, it comes it goes back to this one experience of going yeah. i was not able to communicate and to a writer mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. that's the worst thing in the world yeah, I can't yeah. convey my meaning. Right. Um, is is really, and like I said, I was very young. It was it was. Right. It took me a while to realize just how traumatic that experience had been. Yeah, you yeah, know, that's interesting, and and it's kind of like as a writer, I would imagine it's like one of your like nightmarish dreams where you're trying to communicate but you can't, and then of course it's the reality is is that it happened for you in that way. But I would imagine that's some sort of recurring like writer nightmare about not being able to convey it, your thoughts or your what you're trying to it, say or or yeah. I mean, if if the goal of of the job is to you know. <laughs> get across this meaning in whatever format you're working with, with a degree of clarity yeah. and ideally a degree of power, right. Then, um, then, then, then feeling uh, uh, unable to do so is going to have an effect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I, not to like kind of dissect this, but just out of curiosity, because for me, it's like that experience. It's not actually the plane thing either. Like you, I kind of like, I got over that. I just don't even like being at the airport with all of the people, the rush mm-hmm. to the plane, like that feeling, that just feeling of like, am I even going to play, have a place to put my bag or is everybody going to be a problem? And it's just mm-hmm. like that whole thing, the whole experience is jarring, but like, for you, it seems like it's more a foreign country of where the language it, is different. It, it, that's entirely it. Like the, the oh. process of travel is not know, the problem. Is, it's the being in the it, other it, it, foreign it's land. Annoying. Yeah, right. it's annoying, okay. but it's not the problem. It, it's oh. quite literally being someplace where I, I am uh, afraid I will not be able to um, get across my intention. Mm-hmm. And that's entirely on me. Like right, I said, right, it comes right. from an age and, and, and an experience, you know, my, my life experience has borne out that um, it, it's not nearly the issue you think it is. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like the phobia there is not grounded really in a fact. Mm-hmm. Um, having spent time in countries where I don't speak the language. Yeah. Um, it is. And this is before things like, you know, translate on your iPhone. Or right, whatnot. right. Obviously. Um, and then I just heard that there was this other thing where I literally was interviewing someone to come be an admin. I'm like, oh, do you speak Spanish also? Because so many people here in Florida speak Spanish and everything. Right. And she's like, no, but what I do is I have like a translator where um, I just like say what I want and then I give the other person the other earpiece and it translates it like that. And she made it sound like, well, doesn't everyone have one kind of mm-hmm. thing? And I was like, okay, this is like a very entry level position. And this lady's like, oh yeah, I have a, a foreign language communicator. And I was like, are we there? Are we at that point where now it's that easy? It's- it's funny, you know, I was talking to my brother yesterday and uh, and his wife um, uh, is Japanese. And one of the things she does uh, professionally is she she's a professional translator uh-huh. and like a high level right, translator. Right. right? Yes. She, she like does like the technical, UN. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I could, mean, technical that could do technical. Yeah. yeah like every she does yeah. technical work. Yeah. And he was saying that like her latest job is literally auditing an AI algorithm. Wow. Like she's literally saying like, I am now working on a job that is going to put me out of business. Mm. You know, like what I am doing is literally making myself obsolete. Exactly. And, and, (laughs) 
and 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 my brother was saying, yeah, it's like translation and contract law are both going to be entirely automated in five years, uh, which is in its own way kind of terrifying to me. I mean, or at least sad. I don't okay. know. I don't know if it's frightening as much as I find it a little depressing. <laughs> you know, um, go figure. Yeah, I, well, so it's just fascinating we're talking about this because, like, we we I sit around sometimes with my friends and they always want to, like, play these games where we ask all these questions and, like, well, what is your biggest regret, you know? And they're like, oh, mm-hmm. gosh, here you go. And honestly, for me, it's my failure to um, speak at that level in another language, to speak at an articulate level yeah. of technicality oh, and, like, being able to, like... Because especially for me being a Kung Fu teacher, like not being able to communicate with my father in a way of which philosophically there are things like there are things in the the Kung Fu where it's very poetic and almost Mm -hmm. like I always tell people it's like Shakespeare language, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like old English. It's like old. Yeah. and, And so like it's very hard to understand. And so my biggest regret is not being able to kind of have that level of proficiency, you know, and then I've tried to study and obviously not hard enough or like it would, I would be, it, I would be there, but I'm is, just like, all right, give me the chip, I don't know, whatever it yeah. is. Like, like, insert yeah. it. like that is the one thing that I'm kind of like, I'll just take it at this point. Cause I just, I, um, I want to be able to speak languages so bad. Like polygot is my, my what I would yeah, want what like an ability a realistic superpower <laughs> like that yeah. was, that's mine <laughs> I, that's what I, I want. am I, I absolutely hear you and yeah. it's like I say it's funny because I, I think about this a lot I, I've had a lot of language training mm-hmm. and that one experience when I was young I think really did damage to me in a way that like I said, it's taken 30, 40 years, it's taken 40 years mm-hmm. to realize it. Yeah. Because what happened with that was I was afraid to make a mistake. Right. Right. And you cannot learn a language without embracing every mistake. Yeah. Right. And um and being able to get out of your way enough to accept that and move on mm-hmm. is crucial. And I couldn't, I couldn't do it yeah and it is one of the great regrets of my life that during the years when my brain was its most elastic yes and capable of acquiring this i was afraid of it and i didn't embrace it Mm. and the result is now i've got i've got bits and pieces of like six different languages to one degree or another and and full fluency somewhere in the long lost recesses of my mind um uh, in at least one more Mm -hmm. um and i can't i i can't readily get to them Mm -hmm. um and 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 yeah man i i would i wish you know, and like I say, my brother is he's fluent in Japanese. Yeah. And it is wonderful to see it just simply to see what that has given him. Like he went to school. He studied intensively. Um, he has this other world that that opens up. Yeah. And, you know, technology has done a great job of eroding the barriers that language creates but it is unreliable still right oh definitely (laughs) especially Um, with certain languages like you're just it's not even close because they because it's not the same um grammatical pattern yeah right and then the meaning english meanings like like the the words can mean so many different things and 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 context context yeah and um, and yeah yeah. And so it's kind of fascinating, you know, what your sister-in-law is doing, because it's like she's literally making herself obsolete. But I, I don't know. It's like it's that it's that discussion of like human, uh, you know, texture to something, though. Like, does it change when it's AI or if there's a human interpreting? Right. Because like the 
how it's delivered even matters. And I'm sure AI will get there and, oh, it's and we'll to, be gone. But it, it's but. going to be, you know, provided civilization survives another 50 years and so on. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. It's going to be a status symbol amongst the wealthy to have a live translator. Uh, I see. I see. Right. Right. Like kind of a. Yeah. Here like is man, my person. The man servant thing. Yeah. <laughs> here is my person who can do this. Right. Oh, my uh, gosh. You have a machine. I have a human. I see. Oh, it's like the flip. We're flipping now. Like yeah. where before it was like to have the technology. Yeah, it'll be the, the difference wealthy. between no, here's the <laughs> earpiece. It'll be like, no, here's my translator. So, <laughs> oh, my know. gosh. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's sure. fascinating. Like, oh, <laughs> that's Siri. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of AI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Always listening. But. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you. And I feel like I'm a little overbearing whenever I meet parents of young, like of, of my Kung Fu kids or whatever. And I know that they speak another language. I'm like, are you speaking to your child in Spanish or French or Chinese mm-hmm. or whatever the language is? And they're like, no, they don't really want to speak back. And I'm like, listen, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you need to make them speak another language. Just keep speaking in the same language. It doesn't, I, I get o- a little bit overbearing and pushy mm-hmm. about it because I know when that child is an adult, they will feel that level of regret. Like, I yes, don't think I've met one adult will. that's like, oh, I'm glad I never picked up blah, blah, blah. I've never met anyone that yeah. says, I'm glad I never picked up the language my grandmother spoke. Yeah. Like, no thank, one's ever thank, said that to me. Thank God I'm not bilingual. Right. No, it is no, a phrase no, nobody has ever said. Yeah. Right? I was like, yeah. no one's ever said that. And then, like, because Oscar grew up bilingual, he picks up other languages so much easier. So we go to other countries. Mm-hmm. He can figure out, you know, Italian and and even the French and sometimes Portuguese, you know, and it's just and the way your brain thinks, not that it makes you, quote unquote, smarter, but I think no, your ability to translate. You. Yeah. And that's there is a connection here in the same way. And, and I, I find this the case. These things are related. Math is a language as well. Yes. Right. So the more you practice a language, the better you get at it. Learning a language is hard. It is hard, but it doesn't need to be unpleasant, right? You can do hard things and it can still be fun. And the benefits of training your brain that way are enormous. Yeah. I mean, they're enormous. And, and, and it, 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 yeah, I mean, we can, this is going to be Greg and Mimi spend 45 minutes lamenting, you know, all the languages they don't speak. Our but, regrets of but language, it, language it, it loss. All, in all sincerity, it is. Yeah. I mean, if, 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 if you've got it and you've got the opportunity to pursue it, chase it, mm-hmm. you know, don't, don't run from it. Right. Um, yeah. I, I mean, and it's really hard when you're old. Like, it's yes. like your, your brain's like, I'm sorry, you want me Look, to win? I, <laughs> I, yeah, I am. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's not, uh, it, 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 it isn't easy when you get older. <laughs> to do anything, but language especially yeah. is one of okay. the things. Okay. Look, getting out of bed Waking becomes its up. own challenge. Yeah. Exactly. So, <laughs> Reaching so. for the cup at the top of the cupboard. Don't like, even start with me. On on. On. I, I was doing my PT this you, you morning on my good. shoulder. So, good. Um, okay. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> no, I. <laughs> it's funny because um, you're talking about math as well, and I'm sure you've read it or know all about it anyway, but um, God will outliers right like at Mm -hmm. the time it came out you know oscar and i like kind of digested it and i was like well this makes sense why that i'm not one of those quote-unquote stereotypical asians that is good Mm -hmm. at math because i never spoke proficiently because the thing about and i do know my numbers so that's not really the thing but the chinese language when you do the numbers you're adding so like Mm -hmm. 11 is not a word it's 10 and 1 Mm-hmm. is 11 right and so you're learning like both things at the same yeah, time the concepts, so it's like are concepts are kind of incorporated i'm like oh this makes a lot of sense it's like yeah. so this that's kind of cool it's actually my excuse as to why i'm not good at math but <laughs> all right well it's good it's good that you've got an excuse me yeah <laughs> i was gonna ask um but i i'm glad that but I'm it glad is really you straightened it out but it is really cool though thinking about like oh well that because to me 
sometimes the English language is so annoying. It doesn't make sense. Like why? No, it doesn't. It's not efficient, right? No. And so Chinese is very one syllable and it is very efficient and in a lot of ways. And it's like, well, of course, 20 is two tens, you know, like yeah. it's two, it, it's 10 times it's two. It's 10 basically. twice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, hmm, gee, I wonder like, and you're learning this as a two-year-old, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're already learning things that you don't realize. So um, I thought that was interesting, but yeah. Okay. So we That's both cool. regret not learning language. <laughs> yes. <laughs> both... And it sounds like we both regret not having embraced math as an additional language. So, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Which, what is your top one that you wish you had fluency in language yes <sighs> that's hard um my french isn't horrible mm -hmm. um it's not fluent i kind of wish i had achieved fluency in french Okay. Because if I had achieved fluency in French, then I'd have been able to sort of run the table on Spanish, Italian, German, mm -hmm. like the Romance languages. The Romance languages. Because I, yeah. I have a training, like my educational training, right, was in Latin and ancient Greek. So I have the foundational stuff, or I had it. Yes. I had it. And... Um, yeah, it's it's uh, I mean, look, I'm really good in English. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. You are can, the ability I to can, put words together. Is I, can, I can I can I can I can get English it. to do what I want it. Good to do is in an the understatement. Main. Yeah, good is an understatement. And I think actually that is equally as important is like being excellent in the one thing. Right. But, it, but they feed. Right. Because yes, yes. Uh, I mean, the reason I had to take Latin and Greek was because they're the roots for English mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the main. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think right now, if somebody said to me, like, we could fill your brain with perfect fluency in a language. Okay. I'd probably go French. Uh, just is it because, because you already have it? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I think it's partially that it's okay. it's that I'd like to complete it. And also that I, I kind of go like, well, I could do so I could go places with that. Okay. Right. Like from that, that that would be my gateway drug. Okay. You know what I mean? OK, that's so logical. There's no like fantasy. Like, I would just like to speak this. It doesn't matter that I've started it or whatever. Well, <laughs> I think the other thing is that, look, once you get it, you keep going. Right. So, like, you know, I, I, I'd grab just anything. Want more. <laughs> yeah, I would take anything I could get my hands on. I, I got and, so. and you said you have like bits of languages. Is that because through like book research stuff or has that just been interest over time? No, and it's been it's been education and so on okay. and, and 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 some exposure. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. my Hebrew is not modern, but uh, I, I understand the language. It's the same yeah. thing with with ancient Greek and how it goes to modern Greek. Um, you know, I know very little German. Uh, I have picked up not nearly enough Italian. Um, I was at one point when I was very young, fluent in Spanish. Mm -hmm. Um, somewhere in the back of my head, that's still there. Yeah. Uh, it's buried so deep. I, I wouldn't know how to go about excavating it. I suspect should I, you know, what wh were I living in Mexico? I would I would find it out of necessity. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because I do think immersion is a big, big yeah. element of it. I think that 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 being open to that immersion is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. Um but it's interesting to me that even like, you know, studying Italian uh, lately and things like that. I do find the French coming back to be more readily, mm -hmm. which is, of course, you know, interesting. So, yeah, yeah, we we are now a half an hour in talking <laughs> about languages and people have been okay. like, are they going to talk about comics or anything? I or? don't think so. I think people by now, um, by the way, this is 
it's it's Greg Rucka 47, but really it's 50 because a couple of them were named other things like the old uh-huh. guard episode. Oh, this, this is our 50th so anniversary. This is technically five oh. I mean, if I'm wow. counting right, which you know, as we've established, my counting could be off, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's ten times five. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah so technically i think 50 in listeners okay. kind of know what to expect <laughs> okay I and for and for you new listeners out yeah. there both this of you, is what you should expect yeah that's like, it's, it's always like this so. <laughs> actually the first i would say two episodes probably came off pretty strong with like i'm gonna learn everything about greg Rucka and i'm gonna be a good podcaster and have real questions and we're gonna talk about your inspirations of comics and blah 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 and then i think yeah at some point then it was like here we go <laughs> yeah it's just this is what we're doing during the pandemic <laughs> yeah um uh, it saved lots of lives trust me <laughs> not just ours here it saved lots of people like they were very happy to hear okay. our ranting or you uh, know your ranting mostly <laughs> my ranting yes which uh, now i am a better i am You're better, a better ranter? ranter because I've, of you <laughs> i've you. raised your elevating, ranting game yes elevating excellent my ranting game. yes yeah very good. you can take credit for that you know thank if you yes. if there's a place to write that in like <laughs> mimi's ranting has improved thank there you, so much. you okay <laughs> as long as you feel that's a, po- a net positive uh i i won't malign it so. Well, yeah, because my ability to actually articulate thoughts when I'm frustrated mm-hmm. was very, very, um, you know, uh, a challenge was very people wouldn't understand what I was saying. But I feel like now it kind of comes together a bit better. I'm still it's, working on it. But it's important to be able to let this stuff out. Right. Right. So, yeah. Um, and not just like yelling, but also if you're trying to convey a message, it's yeah. important to be articulate. <laughs> well, and and. There's nothing wrong with being passionate. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the 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 issue arises with where and how you display that passion, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I admit I am somewhat free uh, <laughs> in how I spread it about, but I um. I, I, we 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 ha- there's a weird tension it's certainly in american society and i think throughout the first world in where you're allowed to be passionate and where you're not mm-hmm. um we you know we, um what was his name i uh, forget his first name you know uh, governor dean took himself out of a presidential election because he mm. was passionate on a live mic he made a noise I see. and people were like well he can't be presidential <laughs> and here we are you know 20 odd years later and um well it turns out you know i guess as long as you're not passionate in your hate but if your hate is evident you're, you're okay you know what i mean it's like uh, we, we we've got this very bizarre double standard about what we are uh, allowed to care about and where we are allowed to show that we care. And there was a period in my youth <clears throat> when I was living and spending a lot of time in New York, mm-hmm. but I had a group of friends and their whole aesthetic was um not to be seen to care right it was always disparage and malign and be a little cynical and jaded and and i found it very tiresome and 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 very Mm off-putting um there there is an element in the culture that goes to you know, this is well. You shouldn't. You shouldn't feel. And if you do feel, you shouldn't. Certainly, shouldn't demonstrate what you're feeling. Um, and you absolutely shouldn't share. Like it's okay to feel it, but keep it to yourself. Mm-hmm. And 
I think that's unhealthy. Um, I think that it's silly. Um, And I suspect it's counterproductive, you know? Do you think Um, that's changed over time, though? Do you think that, like... There's more tolerance, I guess, for it now because people are so up in arms about things and so much more passionate and maybe sometimes even to the extreme passionate, like you said, like an, an oversharing or whatever. But like, do you feel like I mean, we're even talking about like the president that that couldn't run because he was caught being passionate. Right. And like how now, like either our, our standards is dropped really low or like there's some sort of leveling out of of societal tolerance Right. And so do you think generationally that changes or do you think it's just with time? I think I think tolerance for it has grown. But I think that as we see in mainstream media and and the like, the people who are the governors of what is appropriate don't agree. Right. That that is of a a generation and an ethos and so on that says don't be seen to care. We get it a lot in reportage. Right. We get it a lot of in in, in journalism. Journalists are not allowed to be outraged or moved by what they're reporting on. They're supposed to be, quote unquote, objective. But in that case, objective is also meant to be emotionless. And that's garbage. If you're looking at a heap of dead bodies right, who have died from a missile strike or a bombing or if you are not outraged, right, if you cannot look at that and get, sure, the job is give me the facts, but the idea that the facts exist in a vacuum is fallacious. And so we get now these arguments towards objective journalism that isn't objective it comes with a bias but it goes to extraordinary lengths to hide its bias like there was a new york times headline i put this up on the discord i just was like i literally i can't remember i think it was last week and it was at night it was late at night and i was getting ready for bed and i looked at my phone as i was setting like the wake up And the little New York Times widget had like a headline and then it had a subhead and the subhead described the maggots and uh, which is now what I've decided I'm calling MAGA folks, the maggots and the Trumpists as hard right, hard right, hard right is what you make when you're giving somebody directions to a location, (laughs) you make a hard right. These people are not hard right. They're fascists. Okay. And the New York times, the New York times quote, the nation's paper of record is a right wing chicken shit work that will not, will not say what it is. The same week, they had run an editorial saying, yeah, you know what? This is kind of bad and democracy is under threat. So which is it? Which is it? If your editorial board is saying that, but you cannot implement an editorial standard that stands by it, you're lying and you're full of shit. And all you care about is your bottom line and courting that far right. That's all you're doing. It's all you're doing. That's an apologist headline. They are not hard right. Right. They are ultra nationalist, fascio Christian conservatives. They're terrorists. They're treasonous. Right. Abundantly clear. And this is the thing. We're watching it play out in, in the media right now. It's abundantly clear. To anybody who has any critical faculty still working, that Trump has committed high treason, right? Simply on the basis of having 
at his home, taken illegally from the White House, documents that reveal the identities of high level agents and secret sources in foreign governments and so on. Right. He has that information in his home. No oversight on it. No controls on it. It might have been in a closet. It might have been in a fucking safe. It doesn't matter. Right. Yep. The material was out in the wild. Those are human beings. Those are lives that he has spent. Never mind all the other lives that he has spent. Okay. On a level, if you argue you are a patriot and Republicans always argue always. their patriotism always. and their love of the country. And this is the best nation in the world and love it or leave it. The same people are now defending him and accusing the justice department right of gross oversight in attempting to do their job now the fbi's job like their mandate is domestic this is so within their rubric okay there is no way to look at the facts of this whoever is presenting the facts and i'm looking over at you fox news and going the facts are of no interest to you and we know that right but <laughs> when even say the new york times is going eh, this is a problem right there's no no question whatsoever anymore none none and little tidbits about like, you know, Macron's sex life are distracting. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's great that he's got details on Macron's se sex life. How much you want to bet Macron has details on his? <laughs> oh, no, I'm serious. So, you know, which of yeah. them has the golden shower videos? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I we know that stuff is out there on Trump. Mm hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I just I um Yeah, it 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 it, it, it it's crazy to me. It it is you know, the, the stakes couldn't be clearer. Yeah. No, for it's... every for everything right now. I watched uh, uh, this is all 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 um all, all, all uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I completely lost the language after all that talk. <laughs> um, I, I've got a recommendation. I've got a viewing recommendation. Um, I watched The End is Nigh, N-Y-E, oh. on Peacock, which is this new Bill Nye series. And it's six episodes. And I, you know, I remember watching Bill Nye when he was on yeah, PBS. Yeah, science guy. <laughs> yeah. Back back when he was doing stand up in Seattle. Um, and it's these six episodes of disaster scenarios. They're end of the world scenarios. Right. And they're very well done. And. Of the six. One, a cut, you know, like Ring of Fire, which is the last one they do, and like Mega Volcano. There are things that <clears throat> clearly we had nothing to do with, right? Mm -hmm. But we can do things about, we can act in the face of. Okay. And then, of course, there are the ones on like the Dust Bowl and the climate change and so, uh, on climate change, right? Uh, where it is much clearer what we we are reaping what we have sown uh, yeah. in some cases, quite literally. But the great thing about these is that, you know, three quarters of the episode is here's what it is. We're going to take a ride on the disaster simulator. We're going to go through the disaster. It's got his wit. It's funny in places. It's very well done. But then you come out of the simulator and he talks about the science and he talks about, this is what we can do. 
These are the things we can do and should do. And at the end, and this is not a spoiler, at the end of the last episode, he, he says, basically, look, you can be, you effectively, I'm paraphrasing, you can get really depressed about this. You can feel like there's nothing you can do, but there is always something you can do. The answer is there. It's in the science. And when I feel depressed, when I feel overwhelmed, I, I look to the science. I'm encouraged by that. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I, I highly recommend it. It's on Peacock. Yeah. Um, yeah. and, uh, I, I actually found it. Yeah. I, cause, and he does, he talks about the fact, like we love disaster stories. Yes. You know, yeah. we all, we all watch these things he's, <laughs> yes. and he's right. And you cannot look away, but yeah, aside from going, well, that, that's a horrible way to end, but kind of cool. <laughs> it's also, like I said, it, 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 I found it very heartening. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And well, it's Bill Nye, so you that automatically gives you a kind of a he, bit of a comfort, but because he, he's, you know, not really doom and gloom kind of no. guy. Even if he's presenting doom and gloom, he's able to kind of maybe soften the blow a bit, but. But well, the science is at the core of everything with him. Angry Bill Nye is something to behold. I have to say, <laughs> when, it, when when you see, oh, though, there's some real anger behind that. Yeah. Like you, yeah. you know, the, he wrote these scripts as well. And yeah. it's it's clear so he's really. like, yeah, I'm not. I'm not screwing around anymore. So, yeah. <laughs> well, the he's got to be disappointed. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Well, he's got to be disappointed because he's been trying to educate us for a very long time. And it's like, thanks, everyone, for not listening. <laughs> well, but one of the things he talks about, and, he, and it's in the first one, it's in effectively the climate change one, mm-hmm. uh, is he's like, you know, you have the voice here. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to make noise about it. And that yeah. goes to the passion thing. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah, this is this is this is my segue, right? Our unwillingness to all of us be seen to scream and shout at people about this. Like, I can't. There is we're in it now. Like, you cannot look at the last six, eight weeks on this planet and not acknowledge what's going on. Mm-hmm. You just can't. No, you just can't. I mean, if you look at just globally, there's no way to ignore it. Why in the hell we're not doing something right now? It's because not enough people are raising, ra- you know, waving pitchforks and threatening mm-hmm. to use their power. Unless our leaders fucking step up. Yeah. It is. Um, it is evident. I mean, literally, our building got struck by lightning last Monday. So, oh, wow. I mean, and it's like, it was loud. It was during the kids class. I had to like that get all the kids. The, yeah, it was really, really. And we have three buildings. But it was like, luckily, not the one I was standing in. But it was like, yeah. oh, this is not normal or good. And then there was another lightning storm two days later. And I was like, yeah. yes, Florida gets storms. Yes, it's quote unquote hurricane season. But this was not from a hurricane, right? Like, this yeah. is just unusual weather activity that has progressively gotten more intense and worse and so like you don't have to look very far for those of us that don't wrap yeah. ourselves up into like world news and oh i don't have time for that like you just have to look outside your window really i was i was talking to a right friend there. of mine he was in san diego was saying he was up at six because it was already so hot he just couldn't yeah. sleep yeah they have seen hundreds over there and in you know Canada, last right? summer we had the the heat dome over portland it's like oh. how quickly for, we forget. Oh, it didn't get that bad this summer. We only had a week of 102. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's not better. Yeah. It's interesting how quickly, even though we're kind of humans as humans complainers, we accept this as a new norm and we just yeah. accept it because maybe it's easier 
then well, we're, we're the really effort, good. I don't know. We're really good at, at, at accepting things. This is this, this goes back to Trump, right? We got really good at accepting this is just the way it is now. Yeah. We got good at accepting that cruelty was the point. Hmm. Right. I don't know how anybody looks at that whole situation from you're living in Florida under DeSantis. How do you not? I mean, you you literally are living in a state (laughs) where where people are fine with it. I know. And it's confusing to me how and I'm sure if we looked up the definition and read it right now of terrorism, how it would be so clearly defined. Right. Because I've always said, like, well, why is why is this okay? Why are these, you know, why does this fall under free speech when it's terrorism? Because they're threatening U.S. soil, U.S. citizens. Like that's, isn't that terrorism? I don't know the definition, but it's pretty clearly defined in the actions that we see. And it's numbing like the tolerance level, like the, the ability to say, well, that's just how it is. We can't do anything about it. And I'm like telling everybody November in, in Florida, (sighs) Let's show in the midterms. Yeah. That's not the case. Like we have a moment, we have an opportunity. I just don't know if it's just going to be wasted. It's it's looking bleak and scary, and you know, I, I'm not I'm not willing to give up. Yep. I'm well, just, I'm not. We I have gotta, to keep fighting, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I suppose you can make an argument that you don't. You know, I mean, I suppose you can you can turn and go like, look, it's over. It's fatalistic. It's nihilistic. What can I do? There's no point. They don't listen. They have all the power. They have all the money and so on. But they don't. They really don't. They had all the power. They wouldn't constantly, constantly, constantly be trying to take away ours. Mm -hmm. They would not be trying to take away your vote in any way they can make it harder for you, make it illegal for you, make it, you know, limit your access to the ballot box, limit all of it. They would not be doing these things if they weren't terrified of it. They would not be doing these things if they weren't terrified of what happens, you know, when they get called to account. Yeah. They're extreme because they're threatened. Yeah. And I still maintain that, you know, for every one of these, you know, every one of these, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greens who's saying, you know, we got to go back to this and God wants this and so on. There are nine others who don't believe anything that comes out of their mouth. It's all about did the check clear. Mm -hmm. And. I think a whole lot of what's going on right now around January 6th, around Mar-a-Lago right now is a bunch of really, really scared Republicans going, oh, this shit that is hitting the fan as we speak is going to get all over me. And they are, this isn't about, this isn't about ideology. This is about survival for them because it's not simply seeing an end. It, it, it's literally being called to account. It's the punishment. It's the loss of everything that they have gained. Um, you know, I make no... I make no claims that, you know... Uh, that that the Dems are without sin. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But, but these people who are calling them Republicans and aren't even Republicans. I mean, think about what a Republican should mean, what the word means, right? They are of the Republic, Mm -hmm. right? That is a Republican. They don't believe in the Republic. They don't No, They don't. Um, Midterms could be very interesting. Right. You look at the Alaska result, you look at some of these results and. I mean, there there would be nothing that would make me cackle with glee more than. um, After all the gerrymandering, after 
all of these suppression, after all of these election deniers getting into positions of power, the election results still are an ass kicking. Mm -hmm. I think they overplayed their hand. And, you know, but I also think that come November, if not prior, we're going to see things. Things are going to get ugly. We are at a place where it's got to get very bad before it can get better. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's like I tear do it not all down and, to build it back up kind of thing. I, well, I do not envy the people of the Justice Department, for instance, or the White House right now who have to look at everything here and go, are we going to charge him? It's a big deal. They know what they're risking. Mm -hmm. They know what they're risking if they don't. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, to me, it seems pretty clear what you got to do yes to me as well but you and i clearly have <laughs> shared opinions well, that you, others you, don't it's weird like it, you know like it, the state it, i'm it, in for example <laughs> in, in the moment of grace right if you can if you can grant this right uh, i i am more than willing to accept that they know what they need to do too the, they have access to a lot more information than we do at any given time. <laughs> and it may, as much as anything else, not be a question of do we. It's a question of how we best do, right? Because you can't get it wrong, right? If you are going to bring those charges and make those arrests, you have to win that case. Yes. Yeah. It, I don't want them and, to be premature. And yeah. not only do you have to win that case, you also have to be prepared for all the contingencies of what happens when you do. All of the people who are going to grab their AR-15s and their pipe bombs and go, this is it. Right? Like, it, literally, if that is a moment where the decision to do so is lighting a match to a fuse. One would hope that there is an awareness of exactly what they may be setting off. So. Ooh, I guess in a few months we shall see. <laughs> well, look, I, I, I guess I can leave with this. Um, There are a lot of people who take their duties very seriously. And there are a lot of people who are, if, if, there are a lot of people who are in the right places to do the jobs. And a lot of them may not, they, this is the thing about career civil service. Their individual politics don't matter. One of the problems that we got, and we got this under Shrub, started happening under Shrub, was that career civil servants were getting removed if they weren't ideologically aligned with the administration. Mm. So in the second Bush administration, one of the things that Cheney was responsible for was making sure these people were removed. Yeah. But one of the things that has made the system able to maintain integrity is I can be a lifelong diehard Republican in the truest sense of what it was to be a member of the GOP mm -hmm. and still serve under Clinton, mm -hmm. right? Or Obama because my job was serving the country, right. not the individual. Yeah. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. And there are still many people who feel that, like you can't get rid of them all. And some of them are very, very good at their jobs, and some of them are very, very smart, and some of them understand the stakes. So 
Like I say, you know, it's gonna it's gonna hurt. There's no way what comes next is not gonna hurt. But there is a reason, despite our impatience, despite everybody screaming at Garland, what are you waiting for? And so on. Mm -hmm. There is a reason for deliberation and um and care and precision in how you proceed. Yeah, the stakes are just way too high. And I, the problem, the flip side of that is we're in September. The clock is damn well ticking. Yes, yes. it's it, I feel that double-edged sword where I'm in a hurry to get some results, see things happen that need to, but at the same time, I want them to have all their ducks in a row or okay. I want them to have everything like neatly wrapped with, like you said, like yeah. contingencies all the way around to be prepared. Yeah. Cause there, there, be. there can be no way, like if they do this, you cannot put it in front of a judge. It's going to be like, I'm throwing this out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so we'll be seeing. <laughs> yes, we will. Um, and so comics. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, look. Uh, we will comics. Uh, uh, you and I should make a point to talk um, when Risen 7 comes out. Oh, we will. <laughs> oh, we okay. will. I mean, as our listeners know, because this will this will actually release after that because we have the spoiler one releasing then, I think. Really? And then it, it, the I, issue I'm, doesn't come out until the end of September, right? Yes. Yes. So it depends how I can align this. But um, in any case, um, I do have a but I want to do more rereads before we 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 dissect. Oh, so seven. before we do the before we do the deep dive. Yeah. yeah I need it, to do some rereads. And I was like, oh, September 28th. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes, yeah, which is very exciting. So, but um, in any well, for case, some. <laughs> oh yeah, for all, <laughs> for all. Um, but we will, we will definitely get into it. And and um, for our listeners, wishing you all a very safe trip. And you know, when this drops, you will definitely have been traveling. At, in I don't know yeah. where in the world you'll be, but in any case, hopefully, we'll talk at some point. <laughs> we will. All right. Lovely Take as always, care. Greg. Yep. Good to see you. <laughs> That's all for today's episode. Thanks for listening to the Sifu Mimi Chan Show. Please subscribe and rate my podcast on your platform of choice and leave a review. You can become a patron of the show at patreon.com slash Sifu Mimi Chan to help keep this podcast going. Follow me and interact on social media at Sifu Mimi Chan on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook.